Okay, there we go. We're going to graph this thing and label all our pieces. All right, so here we go. How do you suggest we get started, guys? Yep, thank you. We are going to factor. So how would you suggest we factor the top? Take a three out. Yep. And I'm going to do that here. When I take out a three, look at what I'm left with. X squared minus nine. And what do we know about x squared minus 9? It factors more. Yep, x minus 3, x plus 3, because it's the difference of squares. So we pull the 3 out, and now we've got x plus 3, x minus 3. Good. What about the bottom? x minus 3, x plus 3. Uh, minus 3 plus 6. Yep, good. Uh-oh, what do we notice? We do. We do indeed. So that hole, and if you have the quiz in front of you, you see there are blanks there. You're going to fill in where the hole is. The hole is at the point 3, comma. It's at 3 because that's what we canceled out, right? And then how do we find the rest of the point? Plug it right back in here, right. So 3, then 3 plus 3, and 3 plus 6. So let's see, what does that equal? Does that equal 2? That's 3 times 6 over 9, that's 18 over 9, that's 2. So in terms of my graph, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to put an open dot at 3 comma 2. Now, what else am I going to put in my graph, guys? What else do I need? Asymptotes. Yep. So let's look at here in the box. Where are my asymptotes? Look right here at the new problem in the box. Where do I have a vertical asymptote? One and your six. I have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 6. That's right. Because the denominator cannot be 0. So here's my vertical asymptote at x equals negative 6. Where is my horizontal asymptote? 1. No. Box it in. How many X's do you have on top? Three. Yeah, over one. So the asymptote's at three. Y equals three. You can also tell that from the beginning. It might be easier to see it from the beginning. Three X squared <laughs> over one X squared. All right. Uh, what about intercepts? Where do I have my intercepts? Well, let's see. If I put in zeros for the x's, put in a zero and a zero, I'm going to have 9 over 6, 3 halves, which is 1 and a half putting in a zero for my x. And then if I put in a zero for my y and cross multiply, I'm going to get zero equals 3x plus 3. So 
So 0 equals 3x plus 9, negative 9 equals 3x. I got negative 3. In a minute, we're going to draw a picture, but does anybody have a question about any of this, like, important stuff so far? All right, let's connect our dots then, right here. Does that make sense to everybody? Got all these points over here. We're connecting them and getting that shape. What do you think we have on the other side? Mirrored. Um, not mirror. Yeah, not mirrored straight across though. Yeah, it's going to be up here. Yep. Perfect. That's exactly right. It's catty corner. So, yep. Perfect. That is it. All right, now let's do the exact same thing again with a different problem. Make sure we've got this down cold. So the other practice quiz has a problem that is start this one? Factor. Yep. Start, we started all exactly the same way. You're right. We factor, factor, factor. So we end up with, let's see, how does that factor? X Some of you are busily writing. What are you writing? You can check out a three. Yep. No, I can't take out a three. So X plus five minus two. Yeah, the X plus five right, minus right, two. Right. So Courtney and Jada, in essence, and Vincent, I need your cameras on. Too bad, you're not doing a nobility, not allowed. You gotta have your camera on, period. You just told us if we couldn't print it, we, all right. Yeah, no, you can't do it in notability unless you join the Zoom with a camera, or I mean with your phone, but you've gotta be on the screen. That is the principal's rule. Okay, I'm gonna put you on my phone. Jada, I need you to be on the screen. Okay, all right, we're not going to do this anymore. From now on, we're going to just have to wing it if we don't have it printed off, okay? We're not doing this anymore because it takes up my time here to stand and let you back into the Zoom and everybody else is sitting there waiting. So there's no reason why you have to do this in Notability. Ridiculous. Ridiculous as well. Boy. Miss Fuller. What? I had a question. Um, I'm so mad. You're just going to write down what I'm writing down. You don't need to be anywhere except writing down, get a piece of paper out and write down what I'm doing. All right, Jada.
Courtney, I can't see you. Okay, whoever just joined with the iPhone, I cannot see you. And it doesn't matter if I can't see your face. Guys, I'm going to explain this to you one more time. Mrs. Barthel has all of our Zoom links. She asks us for our Zoom links. She is going to come in periodically to our Zooms. And if she cannot see your faces, I am going to get in trouble. Now, I have asked you and asked you. So if I cannot see your face, we don't have much time, and I certainly don't want to mess around doing this. So from now on, we're going to zoom on our iPad. We're not messing around with the phones. All right, I'm gonna tell you who I can see, and if I can't see you and you don't get visible right away, then I'm counting you absent. Present. Yes, I know, Nathan. You're very good about it, Nathan. You're, you're wonderful. I can always see your whole face. It's great. Not when we were in class. Get up, Dave. Okay, Courtney, I can only see the top of your head. Chase, I can't see anything. Look at Nathan. Look at Catherine. Look at Claire. Look at Sam. Look at Hector. These are the people that are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Can you not see me? What about me? What, what do you about me, Ms. Ford? <laughs> now I can see <laughs> William's face. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to, uh, somebody told me how this factor, somebody said X plus five, X minus two, and you are exactly right. Now, what about the bottom down here? What, what happens on the bottom? Pull a two out. Yep, we're going to pull a two out. So now, maybe, hopefully, this will factor x minus two plus one. Don't forget the two. You got to keep that two around. And just like last time, we have a nice little canceling. And this is our new problem. Now, tell me what you want to put in our picture now. We got to get all this stuff in our picture. What, what do you want to do? Order doesn't matter. So just whatever you can think of. Asymptote. Okay. Vertical asymptote. Where would the vertical asymptote be? Negative one? Yep, x equals negative one. That's exactly right. How about the horizontal asymptote? Might be easier to look back up here. Where's the horizontal asymptote? Let's see. Two. Be careful. Keep your head. Wouldn't it be a half? It's one over two, isn't one it? Over one. one over two. So that's your horizontal asymptote, one over two. All right, what else do we need? We have our asymptotes, good. I love a hole. We're gonna have a hole, for sure we are. And the hole's gonna be at what we canceled out, so the X is going to be two. And then how do we find our Y? Plug in the two for x. Yep, so that's going to give us 7 
over two times three, seven sixths. So two comma seven sixths, one and a sixth. All right, what else do we need? Plug in. Yeah, I gotta plug in my I gotta get my intercepts now. So I'm gonna let x be zero. Remember your intercepts, one of them is a zero. So for this one, the x is a zero. So if I put in a zero, I'm going to get five over two. halves and if I let y be 0 and cross multiply I'm going to get 0 equal x plus 5 so x equals negative 5 Well, based on that, do you have an idea what it looks like? Can you connect the dots? Hopefully, you did this. And this. Anybody have a question about that? All right, everybody's good, knows what to expect on the quiz. It's gonna look just like this one problem. You're gonna to have to get it factored and then do all the stuff that we did. So asymptotes, holes, intercepts. And then the quiz? next time. We're checking, so Mission Monday? Um, we don't have Mission Monday anymore. So Tuesday? No, we have regular, whenever our next class is, we have, we have class every day. I mean, we have regular classes every day. There's no more Mission Monday. It's, I think it'll be Monday. Okay, then it'll be Monday. The next time we have this period. Okay. Uh, when is 2-7 due? We haven't even started 2-7 yet. Uh, We're gonna well, start when, it when today. was 2-6 due? 2-6 is due tomorrow. Two, this is 2 6 right here. Two seven, we are starting right now. Wait, you said the 2 6 homework is due tomorrow? Tomorrow? Tomorrow at 310, actually the same time your paper is due. Many of you have already turned in your papers. That's great. Okay, so now we're starting 27. So we're on our notes, page um, 21. Page 21 of our notes. This is a change in years. We're not graphing these, we're done graphing. 
Now we're solving. So this time we're just going to come up with an answer like x equals 10. Any ideas on how you might solve this one? Don't be scared. You know how to do that. That's kind of an easy one, actually. How would we do it? I think, would you multiply by 4? You would. Very good. That's exactly what you would do. Because if you multiply everything by 4, aren't these all going to cancel out? And we're going to end up with just x minus 1 plus x plus 4 equals 3. Now, it doesn't always work out that easily, but since the denominators are all 4, just wipe them out. Now, what do we do? Like yeah, combine like terms, exactly. So think of Mrs. Fields' line here. All of these are just going to get added up. So this is going to be 2x plus 3 equals 3. Now we'll subtract 3. So 2x equals 0. And 0 divided by anything is 0. So the answer to the problem is 0. Was pretty easy. Let's look at this one. Now again, don't don't um, make this harder than it is. I think you already know how to do this problem. What would be your thought? Multiply by x? Yes, indeed. So we're going to multiply everything by x. Now, this is, of course, x squared. This is 2x. What is this over here? You're multiplying by x. So what does this become? 15 there. That's just 15. These cancel. That's why you did it. All right, what do you think you're going to do now? We're not done. Would you um, subtract the 15 over instead of zero? Absolutely, it's a quadratic equation, and we always want to have our quadratic equation set equal to zero. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now what? Quadratic formula? You could use the quadratic formula. What else could we do? That will always work. Factor. Yeah, it does factor um, pretty easily. I know some of you don't like factoring. So you certainly could use the quadratic formula. But I'm going to factor because that's a lot more quick um, in this case. And I get two answers, negative 5 and 3. So this equation has two answers, negative 5 and positive 3. Looks like some of you are already working ahead on the next one. What do you think might be a good way to start problem three? Multiply by x. Yeah, it's the same kind of problem, isn't it? So we'll do the same thing. We'll multiply everything by x. And please be careful. We're going to have x squared. 
What do we have here in the middle? Twelve. Just twelve. Very good. Remember, the whole reason that you multiplied was to get rid of that. So that cancels out. And then we have e equals seven x. Now, aren't we kind of like this problem over here? Isn't the same idea? So we'll want to get it set equal to zero. And notice when I move this over, I put it in the middle. So this was in the right order. Does that one factor? Yeah, negative three and negative four. Okay. Remember though, if it doesn't factor or if you don't see how it factors, you can absolutely use the quadratic formula because it's a quadratic equation. X squared, quadratic. Um, as I'm copying this down, I'm going to go ahead and factor that last denominator. Do you, this is problem four, do you see how that last denominator factors? So I'm going to go ahead and factor yeah. it, yeah, when I write it down. All right, now this is a little bit more complicated. Remember, just like over here, you said over here you were going to multiply by x because you had one denominator and you wanted to get rid of it. So multiplying by x would cancel out that denominator. All right, over here you need to multiply by something that will cancel out all the denominators. So what do you think we're going to multiply by if our goal is to get rid of every denominator. X plus four. All right, let's talk about that. If I multiply, oh, if I multiply by X plus four, will I get rid of this denominator? Yep, absolutely. Will I get rid of all of this denominator? Will everything be gone? No. What else do I need to multiply by besides the x plus four? Another x. Another x, yep. So we're gonna multiply by an x and an x plus four. Because multiplying by an x and an x plus four We'll cancel out that denominator and this denominator. All right, so what do I have? I have 2x, x plus 4, minus 3x equal to 12. All right, look at that and make sure that makes sense to you. My job was to multiply by something that would make all the denominators cancel. So we decided we were gonna multiply by an x and an x plus four. So here, nothing canceled, so I still have an x and an x plus four. Here, the x plus four canceled, so I still have the x, and here, everything canceled. That makes sense to everybody? All right. How can you, how can you multiply an x and an x plus four if the, uh, if the other dom denominator only has x plus four? Well, I can multiply by anything I want. <clears throat> the fact that there's no x here simply means, <clears throat> excuse me, simply means I'm going to have an x left over. I have an x left over. It's here. It did not cancel out. 
I have to multiply by whatever it takes to cancel every denominator. So that may be more than I need in some fractions, just like here. When I multiplied by x, I had to keep the extra x here and keep the extra x here because they didn't cancel out. That's what's happening here. The extra x doesn't cancel, so it has to stay in the problem. All right, what have I got going on now? What's left here? What would I have? Two x squared plus eight x minus three x equals 12. So two x squared plus five x, add those together, minus 12 equals zero. I distributed here, added these two together, and moved the 12 over. Now I bet that factors If I FOIL, I get an 8 minus 3, that's 5. Yep, there it is. Again, though, you can go ahead and use the quadratic formula if you want. You're going to get the same answers I do, 3 halves and negative 4. Everybody still with me? We're not quite done with this problem. Everybody still here or do you have a question? about something up to this point. Wait, how are we not done with the problem? Well, let's go back to the original problem. I know I have it all marked up. But look on your paper, the original problem. What happens if you let x be negative 4? Look at your original problem. What cancels out. Well, what do you mean cancels out? What does it put down here in the denominator? If I put a negative 4 right here, what does that equal? Zero. Yeah. Or zero to the zero of the denominator. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So this is what we call an extraneous root. And the only answer to the problem is 3 halves. You remember those rules about domain we talked about over and over and over again? You can never have a zero in the denominator. That has not changed. So whatever answers you get, if they make zero in the denominator, you have to throw them out because you can't have a zero in the denominator. Well, Mrs. Ford, you didn't worry about it in the last problem. No, I didn't because if I put a three or a four here, it's not a zero. The only thing that makes it extraneous is a zero in the bottom. And negative four would make that a zero. So the answer is three halves. Let's try the next one. Um, just like the problem I just did, I'm going to go ahead and factor this last denominator. So this is problem five. In the last denominator, I'm going to factor, and it will be x plus four, x minus one which is kind of nice, because that's what those are in the other part of the problem. Okay? 
Now, what are we trying to do here? What's our objective? We want to cancel our denominators, right? So what do you think we'll multiply by this time? I want to cancel out both denominators, or all three denominators. So what do I want to multiply by? This plus four is nineteen. Very good. Very good. You got to multiply by the whole shebang. Because we do not want to have any denominators left. Now, you've decided you're going to multiply by x plus 4x minus 1. Now I'm going to start, I'm going to do my canceling. So the x plus 4s cancel out here. And that leaves me with 4x and x minus 1. That's what I have left when I cancel out the x plus 4. Now, what do I have left here? I cancel these out. Plus four. And I have 3x plus 4. Very good. Oh, look over here. Doesn't it all cancel? So all I have left is 15. All right, William, what do you think I ought to do now? Um, distribute? Yeah, absolutely. So do that's... This. Do this. What's that going to leave me with, William? What am I going to have here? Perfect. You are right on target. Now, exactly. So we're going to add these two together. These two add together. And then we'll subtract the 15 so that our equation is equal to... No, no, no. I want to get zero over here. What? I want I want my equation to be equal to zero. Uh, so I'm going to move the 15 over here. Yeah. Okay. You was getting too ahead of yourself, Julie. How we, much you could go and get ahead of your head, Courtney? Stop. We always want to get our quadratic equations equal to zero. Okay. Now again, our choices are factoring and the quadratic formula. I'm doing a quick double check here to make sure I factored right. So I'm going to set those equal to zero and I get negative three fours or one. Set this equal to zero, set that equal to zero. Uh, are both of these okay? Or do we have an extraneous problem like we had last time? Extraneous problem. We do, this is extraneous. Why is the one extraneous, Nate McHale? Because it's in the factor problem. Well, I'm not sure I understand what you mean by that. It makes the... It's a factor. Well, yeah, it makes the denominator zero. Yes, it's a factor of the denominator. Yep, so it makes it zero. Yep, that's exactly right. If you put one back into your original problem, you're going to have a zero in the denominator. All right, we're going to do one more. All right, let's see how we do. One more problem. Here we go. Hang on. Number six.
Oh, I'm going to go ahead if it's okay with you and factor this last fraction denominator. What would that last denominator be? X, X plus one? Yeah. In order to decide what I'm going to um, multiply by, I really need to have all my denominators factored. Okay? So, let's see. Isaac, what am I going to multiply by this time? Um, negative 3. Now, remember, Isaac, our goal is to cancel our denominators. So I have to put something in the top that will make all of this go away. So... Um, negative one. Uh, no, I need, there are, it's never going to be numbers. I'm going to be using letters. We're going to have X's down here. Uh, negative X would be. I said it'd be X and X plus one. X and X plus one. X and X plus one. I am going to multiply, Isaac, by any factor that I have in my denominators. So since my denominators have an X and an X plus one, that's what I multiply by. And I multiply every single part of the problem by that. So what happens, Isaac, is here the x's cancel and leave me with x minus 3, x plus 1. Here the x plus 1's cancel and leave me with minus 3x. And here, the whole shebang cancels and leaves me with three. So anybody else out there who might be confused, you are multiplying by every single factor you have in the denominator. So what I have in my denominator here is x and x plus one. Chase Johnson, what do I do now? You're going to want to add like terms? Well, I don't really have any yet. What might I want to do first? Eventually, yes, I'm going to do that, but I don't have any like terms right now. What, what, what should I do? Remember, these are times each other. Multiply those two? Yep, I'm going to foil those out. Yep, that's exactly right. So I'm going to get x squared plus x minus 3x minus 3. So I foiled out the first two terms, and now I have terms that I can add up. So I have x squared. Now, how many x's do I have? Minus 5x. And don't those cancel? Does that look okay to everybody? Let's take out an x. And I get two answers. One of them is 0 and one of them is five. X equals zero, X minus five equals zero. Do I have any extraneous or do I keep them both? Keep them. What happens if I put a zero right here? Yeah, you got those extraneous. Yeah, that's extraneous. Remember, take your number and plug it right back in. 
or use Nate's philosophy, which is if it's a factor in the original problem, a denominator, if it's a denominator factor in the original problem, then it isn't going to work. X was a denominator factor of the original problem. So it's going to give me a zero right there. All right, guys. Good job. Remember, we got a bunch of stuff coming up. Our, our essays are due tomorrow. Our homework 2-6 is due tomorrow. And we have a quiz in our next class, which we think is Monday. Everybody ready for that? Got to understand all that? Okay, if you cannot print, if you cannot print the quiz answer sheet, that's fine. Please just reproduce it on a piece of notebook paper. Okay? That's fine too. Just draw it on a piece of notebook paper. Okie dokie? All right. I will, you're welcome. You. I will see you all later. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Yes. Uh, my my iPad died and and I couldn't get the last thing. But I'm gonna try to do it by myself though. Okay. Well, I'm gonna post the video. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.